Hey guys, welcome to another Unity tutorial on the Everwing clone. In this video, we will be creating a way to keep track of score. So what we will end up doing is just like in Everwing, when the monster dies, it'll explode into a bunch of coins. But first, before we do that, I'd like to make some fixes from our previous video. Well, you might be asking what's broken. Let's see. If I move the game here so we can see both the game and script, it's not a, it's not a huge deal, but it's something that we shouldn't do. When I play this, this is where we left off. We have these waves coming down. I'll let this wave keep going. And here's the problem. In scene, you'll see the wave never destroys itself. It always exists in memory in my computer. But we want it to destroy when it's off the screen. Because otherwise this will create unnecessary overhead in the user's app. We don't want this. So let's fix that. So the first thing we'll have to do is to delete the monster when it's too far low. We've done that sort of logic before in bullet actually. So for the most part, we should be able to copy and paste the script, but I'll just write it out monster. So an update of monster, if the monster is too far low. So if the Y position plus the transform dot local scale dot Y, so this is basically the top of the monster and a little more because the top would be divided by 2f but we can give some more margin so if the top of the monster is below the screen game manager bottom left dot y then just destroy the monster so destroy game object that should fix one of our problems but there's still another problem even if we destroy the monsters these waves hold on let me show you these wave parents won't go away. So as you can see in scene, the monsters are gone when they get down here. But our waves keep tagging on here. And we want to delete these empty waves. So how do we do that? Well, one way to do that is to create a wave. This will be pretty simple. All it'll do is react to changes in its hierarchy. So if it has no children, then we will destroy the wave. So. Unity has an inbuilt function for that. Transform children changed. This is called whenever a child is changed. So in this case, our child is changed because we destroy the monster, which is a child of the wave. So if the child is changed and if this wave has no more children left, then just destroy the wave. And let me show you how that looks now. If I play this, I'll let this wave go through, the monster should die completely, rem and there's an empty wave. And nothing happened to it, and that's because I forgot to add the script wave to the game object wave. So of course the script won't do anything unless you attach um, it. I make this mistake all the time. Anyways, so now if I play, you can see the wave there is no empty wave. There are only two waves at a time on the screen. Cause that, and that's because the old wave gets deleted when it's empty. And again, if I were to magically destroy all the monsters before they get down, there's only one wave. Because that one got deleted. Alright, so that fixes our problems. Okay, so now that we've gotten that problem out of the way, let's focus on creating coins. So what we'll need is a prefab for coins. One thing I could do is copy bullet. That's probably a quick way, but it's prone to a lot of bugs. So let's just create a coin prefab from scratch. So I'll take the circle, drag it here, and call it coins, or just coin. The next thing is to add a tag called coin. Of course, as you might remember, that won't add the tag. That just added it to the tag library, so I'll add the coin under tag. I'll reduce the size of the coin to 0.25. That looks about right. There will be multiple coins, so you don't want them to be too big. I'll set the color to, you know, something yellowish. Yeah, something like that. And we'll need a circle collider, as always, to detect collisions. That's trigger. That's very important again. And a rigid body 2D. But this time we will not make it kinematic. We want it to behave using unity physics. We want it to have the effect of gravity. So the coins will drop down to the player just as gravity works. 
and we also want him to have mass. You will see why. It'll make the animation look really nice. So that's our coin prefab. We'll also add a script for coin. We'll need it later, so just call it coin. Attach that script to the coin, and we'll make it a prefab as we normally have, just like that. And now we can safely delete it. So that's our coin. Another thing we'll need is some sort of way to display the score on the screen of the game. So to do that, I'll right click in the hierarchy and create a new UI text. And this text, we'll call it score. Okay, so f first a few things. This may look a little confusing because it created a canvas and that's normal. To do any UI on top of your game, you need a canvas. So you could add images, text, etc. Everything goes into under one canvas. This canvas it looks weird and seen because it's gigantic. It's much bigger than what looks like your game screen on the scene, but in fact, it, the text is showing up here. So in a sense, this canvas is supposed to scale to your screen. So we'll do some settings. First of all, the canvas scaler should scale with screen size. And in our case, just 1080 by 1980. I always do this with games. It makes it a little easier to work with the math of getting the UI right. You'll see our text is here. It's probably not even visible in the video right now. So we'll have to make it much bigger. Then let's make it of width 250 and height 150 and font size 100. So now you should be able to see the text. This will start with zero, but we want to be able to fit up to four digits. I don't think anyone will play this longer than having four digit scores. So this should be big enough. We'll set its anchor, the score's anchor, to the top right. So we'll want it to be aligned to the top right of the screen. Let's see it, how this looks like in scene. So we want to move this over here, up to the anchor. So you know, let's start with maybe zero position, zero height. But as you can see now, it's kind of off the screen. So we want a little bit, we want it to move a bit to the left. I'll say about maybe 200 down and 100 down like that. Yeah, that looks almost right. So. It's still a bit too far left for my taste. Yep, and I want it to be right aligned. Okay, that's too far right now. <laughs> Perfect. And the color is a bit weird on blue, so I'll just make it again kind of a goldish yellow. 230, like that. And we're gonna start with a score of zero. We don't want our player to start with a thousand score. That'd be nice, but we're not that nice. So this completes creating the score text and the coin. So all we'll have to do now is script it all to work as we want it. So the first thing we'll need is to make the enemy explode into coins. Let's open the enemy script and we'll need the enemy to get access to a copy of a coin. So again, serialize field, coin, coin. So we'll give the enemy the prefab of a coin and enemy will instantiate that coin whenever it dies. But we'll not just instantiate one coin, but as many as get coins tells us. And remember that method, get coins, is overridden by monster. So monster tells us that there will be three coins. And the reason we do this is because boss will give us more coins. You'll see how it'll work. So int coin count and die is get coins. So again, if enemy happens to be a monster, then we'll get three coins. If the enemy is a boss, which we haven't coded yet, it'll give us Tannish coins. Now for each coin, we'll loop through all the coins and instantiate all of them. So we'll instantiate a copy of the coin at transform.position, which is just the enemy's position, and no rotation, so quaternion.identity. We first need to attach the coin to the monster. So right now you can see the monster has a coin field. We'll attach coin to it, run the game. And if we defeat a monster, it'll create this one coin. Why is it only one coin? Even though we wanted three, it's because the three coins are stacked on top of each other right now. So we'll kind of need a way to move the coins apart from each other. And we'll do that in coin. Open your script for coin. The way we'll move the coins apart from each other is through sort of an explosion animation, in a sense. We'll add random force to each of the coins, so they just move in a random direction away from each other. We're using physics, so how do you use physics? You need to get access to the rigid body. So the coin does have a rigid body 2D, if you did everything right. And we're just getting an, a copy of the rigid body. So we'll need an X force, which is just gonna be random.range negative 50 to 50. 
all we're doing right now is getting a random number between minus 50 to 50 and a y force which will always be a little bit upwards we want the coin to go up a little bit and then come down which is what happens in everwing we'll add a random either weak force upwards or strong force and we'll let the computer decide how strong it wants the force to be and every time it will be something different randomly we'll put this all together in a vector new vector so the x force y force and finally we'll add that force add force to the rigid body with the vectored force great so if we run this now the coins should move apart from each other but while i'm here let's make another change so as normal when the object goes out of the screen we want it to destroy so once again if the, if the coin position plus a little bit at the top its height is too far low so it's below the screen and then we want to destroy the coin and now if we run this the coins should kind of yeah they should just explode away from each other and delete when they're off the screen and you can see that they're deleting off the screen by looking at scene right here they don't exist once they go down there great so now we need some sort of way to for the player to collect the coins so we'll do that in the player script okay so in player we're going to need some sort of way to detect whether a coin collided with the player so the way we do that is identical to the way we checked whether an enemy collided to a bullet so we can just copy and code that on trigger enter 2d code down here in player and instead of checking whether we collided with a bullet we're going to check whether we collided with a coin so if we collided with a coin what are we going to do now we will have to somehow tell game manager hey i just got a coin update the score one really obvious way to do it would be to hold a reference to game manager an example of holding a reference would be what we did with bullet we had a, a reference to a bullet prefab we had a reference to a spawn spot color etc so we could have a reference to game manager and if we collide with a coin we will just tell game manager hey i just gained a coin increment your score or whatever which we don't have right now but this is considered really bad programming practice why because game manager is a manager it manages things other things don't know anything about the manager so that's not a good idea this might not be too convincing for you right now but as the game size gets larger if you wanted to add more features your code will become increasingly complicated and it will end up looking like spaghetti so you don't want to know anything about the manager or do anything directly to the manager so how are we going to tell the manager i just gained a coin well good news c sharp has a really nice way to do that using events the way events work i like to think of it as kind of like talking to the rest of your program what it'll do is whenever the player gains a coin it'll tell the entire program hey, I just gained a coin. You can do whatever you want with that information, or you can choose not to listen. In our case, the game manager will listen to whenever the player gained a coin and do something about it. In that case, increment the score. So let's do that. If you've never seen this concept, it might seem a little bit complicated, but I'll walk you through it. So first we'll need a delegate. A delegate void, let's call it gain coin. And for now, you don't need to worry too much about what it does. It's kind of a nice way to pass information to your event but in this case we don't need to give any information other than just, hey we just gained a coin doesn't matter what else and we need an event and this is the key part so the event will be of type gain coin which we just defined here and we'll call it on gain coin now how do you use this thing on player whenever we collide with a coin we're gonna call this on gain coin function what this will do is if anyone is listening it'll just tell them to gain a coin and that sort of stuff we will define later so you'll see what i mean but first we need to check is anyone listening at all the way we do that is if on gain coin is not equal to null then call this function so basically it's checking if nobody is listening then don't do this but if someone is listening in this case it's not null then call the function and the next thing we'll need is to destroy the coin so other dot game object happens to be the coin and we're destroying it because once the player collects the coin the coin has no use it's it should just disappear great so if we actually run this right now what should happen is is 
the player should be able to absorb coins. And you can see that is the case. The coin does not go below the player if it collides with the player. So that's perfect. Now we need to worry about adding score. How do you increment the score? Well, game manager will need some sort of access to the score text. So we'll need to, first of all, include Unity Engine dot UI so that we have access to things like text. This is very important. And now we can do things like text score. So we need a reference to the score text right here. So this component. And we'll need to make it serializable so we can add to it. And by the way, I made a mistake last time by making all of these public. It's not good programming practice to make something public for no good reason. The reason we did it was so we could drag in player, mo monster, wave, etc. But the better way to do it was to use serialize field and remove the public. So this is better programming practice and it is what you should follow. Um, you shouldn't make something public unless you really need to access it from another script. In this case, these things are not being accessed from another script. Okay, so we have this text score, which is initially zero. And whenever we gain a score, we're going to add to this score. Somehow we're going to need access to the player's event. And right now we can't. We need a access to the player. So we're going to do that. Player P is the result of instantiating player. Now, why can't we just use player directly? Because this player here is the prefab. And this player is the result of instantiating that prefab in our game. And we'll need a function void handle gain coin which should match the signature for delegate void gain coin. You don't need to worry about it. All you need to worry about here is that it's a void and it has no parameters. So that's exactly what we have. So the next thing we'll need is some sort of way to listen to the player gaining coins. And this is the syntax for it. So on gain coin, we'll just subscribe to the handle gain coin. Okay, I said that wrong. Handle gain coin is subscribing to on gain coin. It's listening to whenever the player gains a coin. Whenever the player gains a coin, we're going to handle it by adding the score. So one thing I forgot to do is to actually keep track of the number of coins we have so far. And we'll do that using a coins integer. So a coin that starts off with zero. And every time we gain a coin, we're going to increment it. It's, this is syntactic sugar for saying coins equals coins plus one. And we also, more importantly, need to update the text of the score. So whenever we gain a coin, we're going to update the score text to coins.toString. So this will convert this coins integer into a string. We'll set that to the text right here in score. And this is actually all we should need to keep track of score. So in game manager, we'll need to drag in this score text right here. And now, if everything was done right, the player should be able to gain coins whenever it collects them. There you go. If I just take one coin, you'll see it only goes up by one. If I take all three, it'll go up by three. So as you can see, the text up here updates. And this is all we need for gaining coins. And this might have been the most complicated part of this tutorial. So it's nice to get that out of the way. But as you can see, the result of it is that we almost have a complete game. We still can't die, but now we are able to gain coins and get some sort of a score. So dying and boss might be the next part of the video. As always, thanks for joining and see you next time.